This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero safely on your iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source and you always control your own keys and seed. And by XMR.to. Anonymously exchange your Monero into Bitcoin and seamlessly send Monero to any Bitcoin address. Go to XMR.to or use it right in your Cake Wallet. Cake Wallet and XMR.to are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Pavel Polach of RMX, a hardware wallet from Monero. Douglas and Pavel discuss the difficulties and challenges of creating an open source Monero hardware wallet, the goal of trying to keep it a basic Monero operational system, and how RMX welcomes developers from the community that can contribute to the project and help it succeed. Monero Talk starts now. All right, Pavel, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, thank you. you for thank you for having me. So RMX Wallet, it's uh, hopefully going to be or soon to be the first Monero hardware wallet. Is that uh -huh. is that what we're uh, what we're hoping for here? It, it, it depends how how you how you think about the term uh, hardware wallet, because uh, basically, if you say hardware wallet, you can have uh, just. Uh, small PCB and then some EEPROM with a private key and that's just fine, you know? So it depends and uh, I I believe that it's not so easy with Monero with uh, hardware wallet. And, and I should say the first, the first Mon strictly Monero open source hardware wallet, not a, uh, I mean, obviously yeah. you can store Monero on, on other hardware wallets, right? Uh, basically this is what we are aiming for. Mm -hmm. But uh, I must say that it's uh, it's not so easy like with the Bitcoin because uh, everything is much more demanding and more complicated. So so even if we uh, even if we are really heading there, I wouldn't say it will be soon. But, okay, uh, we have something which is working, something which is not working well yet. But there is definitely a way, way to go, I believe. Okay. Now, uh, do you use any other, any existing hardware wallets? Uh, yeah, I personally, I, I use uh, them. Uh, I, I have some experiences with the Trezor wallet, of course, and also with the Ledger. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, regarding uh, RMX wallet, it's something like a remix of uh, other other hardware solutions which we have found and which we explore, and uh, yeah, that's. It. So, what would be the difference between uh, what do we call an RMX or Remix between? Oh, you Remix can call it Remix. It's okay. Okay. Remix, Remix maybe. So the and main, that, yeah, the main difference that stands is, for Remix. Is that is that the? Uh, yeah, this was the idea. And, okay. Uh, it's uh, from one half. The idea is uh, that it's uh, uh, just same letters in a different order, but uh, other idea is that we have been thinking so much about uh, other hardware wallets that finally we we have something like remixed mm -hmm. hardware wallet. Okay. Um, yeah. The the thing with Monero is that. Uh, as uh, probably uh, many people know, uh, Monero use more keys than Bitcoin is using, and uh, it's tricky to uh, to use the whole potential of Monero if we speak about hardware wallets because other implementations for Monero they they are leaking a private uh, view key uh, to the node, and then the node is uh, doing the blockchain blockchain scanning. And then once this is done and uh, you need to sign actually something, then only the signing is happening inside of the wallet. But during the scanning, you are leaking your view key. And mm -hmm. that, me that means that your computer knows all your transactions, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. So from the point of view of your computer, uh, if you use hardware wallet, for example, Trezor or Ledger, uh, it's 
more bit Monero behaves more like Bitcoin than like Monero. You know? Right, right, right. And, uh, so to get to the point, uh, if we speak about true Monero hardware wallet, we believe that uh, the the ultimate goal is to make the full scanning inside of the wallet itself. Mm -hmm. so uh, and this is uh, not easy. That's that's the reason why nobody is doing yet. So you need a lot of computational power, and uh, that's that's the reason why it uh, it takes so much time to develop. Mm. Why is it so difficult? I mean, we have things like like um, you know, Cake, which is on an, an iPhone that's that's scanning the entire yeah. blockchain. Why is this a different animal? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, you have uh, the trick is that uh, the trick is hidden in the definition of hardware wallet because Cake Wallet, for example, is running on Android phone, so it has own operational system with uh, certain levels of uh, uh, running programs, let's say. And uh, so this is the first thing. And uh, if you compare it, for example, with Ledger, Ledger is uh, Quite, quite a dumb device, which is suited only for signing the transactions mm -hmm. and sending them outside. So uh, the, the Android phone, if you compare it, uh, it has much uh, bigger level of, a higher level of complexity of other programs which are running there and sharing the memory and also the uh, possible, uh, uh, possible surface for some kind of attack is much wider, let's say. And also, if you use a cake wallet, uh, I, I believe that, uh, that the blockchain scanning is not happening in your phone. I believe that if you are using cake wallet, you are leaking a view key to the node somewhere. And this no, node- not, not in cake. My understanding is not that doesn't happen in cake. Cake does the scanning on, on the phone itself. Um, I know there's other wallets that do what you're talking about that uh, scan I guess, and, and use the view key to, you know, to do okay, the scan. I, I, might, I must check this one, but I don't okay. believe so. I don't think that your Android phone is powerful enough to scan a Monero blockchain because on an Intel i7, it could last like uh, tens of minutes, like half an hour if you have your blockchain downloaded. So I don't mm -hmm. believe that you can make it on your phone, but maybe you can. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I know they don't use a view key to, to do the scanning. Yeah. But you're saying they still. Uh, sorry, I know they. I know Cake doesn't use a view key to do a scanning of of the blockchain on a server off off your phone. Which that I mean that that is my my understanding of that. But you're saying okay. you know that's the case. Maybe okay. maybe you're right. I don't know to be okay. honest, and I'm sorry if I'm confuse confusing somebody here. But I must check personally. Okay. I just know that I, I tried it on my computer and it's uh, it's definitely much more powerful than a normal Android Android phone and it it's uh, significant uh, significantly hard for my computer. Gotcha. So that but so that's the challenge with with the hardware wallet as opposed yeah. to a wallet on an iPhone or an Android which already have these com powerful computing systems obviously built into them. Yes. Uh, because uh, you know, if if you have a if you have a if somebody can make a hardware wallet out of the Android phone, uh, then it doesn't make a sense because uh, we already have that. If right. we want to bring something new, it must be more more hard than it, more more everything, you know, more low level. So. So only thing which does sense for me is uh, to try to develop something which is really, really basic in terms of operation. Like it's doing only Monero compute, computing, nothing more, no operational system. And uh, maybe some people can say that it's not a good approach, but uh, actually this is what we are just thinking about. So. And, and the, the idea behind doing that is because then that will allow you to do it in a completely open source way, right? And the, where the hardware itself would be open source as well? Or is it? Yeah, it's, uh, it would be the, the best, but uh, the, the reality is a little bit more different because, uh, you know, the chips which we are working with, they are not open source and they will never, never be. So we are hitting the wall here 
because we don't have own manufacturing. You know, there is something which in the future will we believe will be possible. This is, for example, companies like uh, uh, companies which are working with Risk Five, for example. They allows you they allow you to to design your to use their core, design your own hardware modules, and order a silicon with them. And so you can get a chip which is perfectly suited for what you need. In in case we we uh, go this way, it would be really really it would be feasible to do very dumb and low level Monero hardware wallet which will be able to do the full scan inside. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now it's uh, it's expensive. It's uh, it would cost hundreds of thousand dollars at least. So uh, I think it's more a question of the future if we get some somehow there. Because I think uh, uh, you can also do it with FPGA. You can design the whole stuff on the board and uh, then you can maybe get the speed you need. But uh, you will never sell this because one FPGA is really expensive. If you need a really big one for that. If you want to implement the whole Monero wallet on FPGA, it will be, at first, it will be very uh, complicated with the developers. And <laughs> secondly, you will have to pay a lot of money for the device. So I don't think it could be experimental, it could be fun, but uh, it will not be like a uh, product mm -hmm. right now. So, so yeah. I was just trying to answer your open source uh, mentioning uh, mm -hmm. that it. Of course, hardware is open source or open hardware, but this is not the point. It's not about how the traces are made on the PCB, because there is another level, which are the chips itself, and this will never be opened. Mm -hmm. Right. So we are just playing with open hardware somehow, because we have nothing better than that. Right. We're yeah. We're we're not going to get to that that next level anytime soon, right? We're uh, unfortunately, not. Yeah. Uh, there is like so much money inside that I, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think it will happen soon. Hmm. So at the end of the day, what would you say the so the advantage to this over something like a treasure or a ledger is at least that the, the scanning itself would be taking place in in the device. Yeah, we have, we have a working uh, working code now, which is doing uh, the full scan inside. And uh, uh, yes, we can do that. I don't think it will be for all the people, like uh, it is the option for everybody because it needs some time and people want to make it fast, everything, you know, they don't want to wait at even two minutes. Mm -hmm. so, so if you imagine that you would use your hardware wallet in a way that every month you will have to you will have to plug it for three or five hours to be able to rescan the history of blockchain. I don't think it's for everybody, but it can help to people who really want to be you know, on the edge and they want mm -hmm. to do the full scan inside. So with our wallet, this is possible. We we have a benchmark and it works. Uh, but uh, you know, it depends. If uh, if if uh, who knows if it will be like good for people? Because my friend told me that uh, you know it's. Uh, it's a too cumbersome, you know, for people to use it actually. But it depends. I don't know. Somebody well, I mean, it's, it's really it's really for for storing, not so much for using, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. what would you really see as being the use case here? Somebody that just wants to safely store their Monero, right? I think the problem is that not everybody is the the kind of person who loves to you know cuddle operational system and stuff. Uh, people usually use computer for work and not like a friend, you know, for talking with the Linux command line. So for those people, you need some tool for them to provide them ability to transact out and into some other wallet which they use for everyday everyday spending. Mm -hmm. and for that case, you can have a separate computer. You can play with some offline signing of or of transactions or do things like that or you can use a wallet like we have for example so th this is basically where we are trying to get mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah no I, th I think in the monero community you would you would find 
quite a few people that would be interested in, in using something like this because I feel like the Monero community in particular likes to be a, as pure as possible with yeah, you know exactly. owning their own keys and controlling their crypto. Um, so I think I think you know despite uh, the fact that it may not be the most user friendly device, I think you would certainly see quite a bit of demand there for a product like this. Yeah, I, I personally believe that the important is to start because uh, the, the things are being improved. You know, it, it's it just it happens and it arrives to the scene, and then once it's being used, it's being improved. So right. other things are coming, and other concepts, maybe ideas, maybe different chips, whatever. But uh, I think that somebody should do that, like uh, in one of our community. So somebody should think about it at least. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a very good idea. Mm -hmm. So, who's who's working on this? Is it just you, or there's a few few people, or is it a? Oh, it's uh, hard to say. But in general, this project is very decentralized, of course. Okay. And uh, right now, uh, it's me doing like the hardware part and uh, one of my friends is working on a PC side, like uh, he's doing all the stuff which is happening inside of the computer. Uh, and uh, basically, that's we two working on that. But uh, it has a like some history and uh, I took it like a hobby project and uh, that means that it it we, we just if we have a time we push it a little bit and then we just forget it for a while and then something emerge like uh, something which we really don't know how to overcome it and then suddenly there is some idea you know so we again push it a little bit forward it's not like full-time job that we are only inside of this topic. It's not like that. Mm. So I don't know. So this is uh, this is how, how how I would describe it. And of course, there is once upon a time there is somebody who is joining us and uh, adding a bit of uh, effort here and there. But I don't know if uh, I can say that they are working on that. You know. Mm -hmm. What what made you want to pursue this project? Uh, yeah, I first uh, well, I first started to think about it uh, somewhere maybe a few years ago when there was a mother hardware project funding on a community crowdfunding system, and I was a big fan of Monero, and uh, because I'm working with electronics, I was thinking that I could help. So I contacted the MSBB, the guy who was behind that. And That's the Costello uh, project you're talking about? The, the the previous attempt at the hardware wallet? Yeah, it's the, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, for a few months, I was trying to, to contribute. And uh, I met, so I, I was on a meetup in uh, Vienna and I met great people and this, uh, somehow started to be fun. And since then, I started to think about how to push it a little bit forward here and there. And uh, after a few months, I just uh, started to work on our own, you know, some experimental hardware, some. And then I realized that there is a chip which is actually doing the mathematics which we really need. And but uh, there was no no working development board which I could use, so I started to make a development board, you know, and it was it goes like that. So since since I don't know a few years ago, I, I'm somehow interested in that. With the with the periods when I was working hard on it, and with the periods when it was totally abandoned. Mm -hmm. Do we know what happened with the original Costello project? The that that original hardware wallet project is that. Is that now this, or is that a separate project that people are? No, no, no. I, I, I would like if it if this remix wallet will be not so much connected with the previous project. Uh, okay. Even I contributed, but it was very tiny contribution, and also I I did only fork of the treasure on the purpose. It's different story, and uh, I don't know so much about the other project, and okay. I. I am in contact with uh, MSVB with Michael, 
Mm-hmm. And I met him. I met him once upon a time somewhere, and I believe he's still working on that. I don't know. Okay. Um. So th- th- these are this these are all great things. So how far? How what what have you actually accomplished to date? So you've gotten to the point where you have a device that can actually scan the entire, freely yeah. scan the entire blockchain. Yeah, uh, we have a device which we uh, just plug uh, plug uh, to the computer, and uh, I just set up the block head, and I let it running, and it's computing the blocks, and it tell, it's telling me how much blocks I need to scan to get to the. Uh, to, to the you know to the top of the blockchain and uh, it has also functionality of secure messaging over xmpp and we also did some signing with that because at, at the beginning we were thinking about it like about a uh, case study case study for uh for privacy extremists let's say mm. uh, so we we try to implement different functionalities and uh, one of them was a secure messaging, which was easier than Monero itself. So we started with secure messaging, and then we went on to try to implement Monero. And uh, we still didn't finish a signing, so I am not able to send transactions. But I would say that uh, it looks quite well, uh, the, the scanning itself, on a blockchain, like on a main net, stage net, and also on the main net. So it's the, it's the same basically. Oh, the, so, only sorry. The difference is that on the mainnet there is much more transactions. Uh, it it takes longer. This is also a thing which I didn't uh, predict. But the uh, modern blockchain is growing, and also the activity is growing. So the calculation we did one year ago, what we thought could be sufficient, is uh, is uh, more today. It's better. It's good for Monero. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a good sign. For That's us. a good sign. Okay. So, what do you see as being the next steps? Honestly, there are a lot of way ways how it could go, and uh, I got a very nice uh, idea from one of my friends uh, recently. He told me that uh, the whole stuff with making a dedicated hardware for Monero is not a good idea, that we should uh, find a, a development board or something like Raspberry Pi or something which is very easily, uh, you can buy it everywhere and we should implement it on that. In that uh, way, everybody who wants to have own a Monero hardware wallet is not like buying official Monero hardware wallet. You know, you, you can just buy something which is very broadly available and just flash it and it will behave like that. So basically the idea of making the own hardware is very wrong from the beginning in case of Monero because uh, this is different kind of approach. I don't know, I'm thinking about that. Maybe it's, all, uh, it's not so good like it looks and maybe it's, we should find, uh, for example, I don't know, there are many many manufacturers of uh, different chips. Maybe we should find something like that and uh, port it there. I don't know. Mm. Or we can find somebody who can uh, who can fund us uh, the, uh, the trial run, maybe manufacturing of 50 boards, 100 boards, and try to do some crowdfunding. We are, I, I believe we are ready for this. Uh, yeah. Mm. For example. Yeah. I think you would. I think you would be able to get some funding for that. I think, like I said, I think uh, there's a lot of people in the community that would want to. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good idea. But uh, you know, I saw what happens to other fundings, and uh, it's still uh, uh, a lot of work to do. And I really don't want to destroy my name. So you know, it's. Uh, very hard to balance it out if you need the funding if you're really sure that you can make it uh, i'm thinking about that and maybe okay. i'm not the right guy for uh, for that you know I, I would like to think about the uh, like the hardware itself and i'm not the the one who is uh, 
able to make a campaign and who is having fun while making a campaign and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I'm. I believe that it will solve itself if there is some some community effort to say, let's say something like, okay, there are people who are willing to buy this board for one and one monero or one and a half monero, even if it doesn't work, or even if it's not working yet, you know, because uh, honestly, I would need uh, quite time to make it working, you know, to make it to make a pro product out of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to ask for you know big funding to make the product product out of that. And yeah. That at the moment when it's ready to find out that it's that actually there is five times more transactions and it's not usable anymore. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I guess the key would be to to try to pick a goal that that you know is attainable yes you know yes. and then try to f obtain fundraising based on that so you know take you know milestones that are attainable and baby step towards the the larger milestone yeah 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 we we were thinking also about that but uh, it was just uh, Recently, the things were quite complicated on my side. I was moving and uh, other family stuff that was happening. So maybe I will get soon back to it and maybe I will try to uh, put my things uh, together on a paper and to to have uh, an idea how to show it to the other people, you know, to, they can judge it or whatever. They can say opinions so we can lower the risk. You know, I, I saw what uh, happens to the to the previously funded uh, hardware project, and mm -hmm. I understand it happened because it's like very, very. Uh, uh, it, it looked like impossible project from the beginning for me, you know, and I was not sure that it it will ever be useful somehow. But still, you know, that funding happened, and then I think it's not so easy for some people to be still in the community. And it's very experimental work, so I don't. Mm -hmm. want to, I would like to lower the risk of this, like going in a bad direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I encourage you to to try to you know try to pursue it further. I do think there'd be demand, but like you said, you need to go about it in a way where, you know, you could pick something that you could actually obtain. But I yeah. think there's there's probably something there, even if it's you know some smaller smaller steps that you you know say i'm going to try to do this within the next you know six months and then you know just prove yourself along the way for you and for the community to get you know get comfortable with proceeding you know yeah 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 it's a but it's very it's very uh it's a sens sensitive uh piece of hardware you know hardware will it mm -hmm. just uh you must be sure that uh, uh you will not uh do it in a bad way you, know, you, mm -hmm. you must you must really be sure and uh, uh this is like something which i'm struggling with i don't uh, i don't think i i will run away or something but uh you know there could be some some mistakes like development mistakes and uh i i it, it all depends on the communication with mm -hmm. the i believe it could be done in a way that uh, it's still open and everybody's uh, working with it on his own risk and mm -hmm. events. Is this? Are you working on any other projects in the in the crypto community? Uh, not right now. No. I was trying to do some some stuff uh, like for uh, signing. Uh, things on the hardware, but it was it, it's not so related with uh, crypto. No, okay. I, I take crypto like a hobby. You know? Okay. I, I like this sphere and I, I like people. I'm trying, I'm really trying hard to not take it so seriously because uh, you know, it, could, it could go in uh, many directions, mm -hmm. but I like it and I would like it to succeed. And especially Monero, I would like to succeed. How did you, how did you become a Monero enthusiast? What did you were you always a Monero uh, guy? Did you start as a Bitcoin person? 
Yeah, I, I, of course, I started with the Bitcoin and uh, then um, then uh, we were all of all, me and a few friends. We were amazed, of course, that something like Bitcoin is happening. We were amazed and we were not able to tell about it to other people. So it was like beginning of a cult. I think that many people know that. And then uh, I remember there were some there was there was a project uh, I think it was called Zero Coin or something like that and they were they were trying to solve the problem of anonymity of transaction and uh, it looked like it's very interesting that time it was very interesting but uh, I think it uh, nothing uh, they didn't continue or whatever but since then I was thinking that maybe this is a thing which should be improved in a crypto in general and then I. Then I found it out there is a Monero, and it was, I was very uh, amazed again, much more than before. And uh, actually, the more I was meeting people in the crypto space, the more I started to to see that people who are actually using crypto for something, they are using Monero. Mm -hmm. Like uh, it's uh, it's a majority of people I have met who are living from crypto or who are selling products for crypto uh, they are big Monero fans and they are using Monero because nobody wants to share you know you know the story nobody wants to share the transactions with others so there are people who this is just my experience there are people who are speculating yeah okay go with the Bitcoin be, be good there but people who are actually trying you know making money like a developers and once in a month they want to sell it to the neighbor to be able to buy a bread or whatever they are using the monero so this is how i started to think that monero is really good to have and that i would like it to succeed mm -hmm. so when when did you see that as being a problem with bitcoin uh its transparency is that something you always thought was an issue from when you first no i think uh it was uh, a few uh, a few uh, important uh, questions which were going around the community from the beginning uh, there was like problem with Bitcoin that uh, uh, the mining will, will just not work what I remember that people were saying oh, this will not work and then it was uh, I think it was after 2015 I have heard for the first time the word fungibility this mm -hmm. is what I would say somewhere there it was like fungible fungible and what is what does it mean fungible and then we find out that actually this could be uh, the problem mm -hmm. but at that time it was already uh, discussed uh, with my friends like uh, there is that zero coin and it could be a problem with cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very cool and then so have you um contributed to monero at all in terms of code or anything or no no, no, unfortunately not. Uh, it's too complicated. I, I was trying, but uh, uh, I'm not so good like in C++ and um, I'm not, uh, not so good to contribute. But I have some ideas which I would like to add maybe one day, but it, they are very minor. So maybe if I have some time in the future, I can, if I need the other project, you know, maybe I will try to contribute. and. I, I I think that uh, I think that Monero is uh, very huge for for somebody who is not uh, uh, usually working with uh, complicated and huge C plus plus code base. It's uh, I don't know that I know that there are some efforts to to make it more open or more readable for beginners or people who are trying to start. Uh, but uh, still, there is a, there is a big step between the the basic libraries and examples on the internet, and then the actual code. I don't know. Maybe it's also because not not so many people are coding for Monero. I believe that uh, if you compare the core developers or the commits, there is not so many people. I believe actually committing and. Uh, Maybe if there were more people uh, there, it could be like more covered with the uh, internet uh, medias, you know, like Medium and GitHub and stuff like that. Maybe there will be more examples so people could learn it quickly. Mm -hmm. I don't know. 
Now you said you were you're in Prague. You're located in Prague. Oh, close to Prague. Yeah. Close to Prague. Is there is there a uh, a Monero community there? Is there a meetup that happens in in Prague? Oh, there is a crypto community, very, very strong crypto community around Paralonipolis. And I believe that all of them, all of people who are going there are big fans of Monero. But yeah, I've never been. Like, you, how, do you go to that? Yeah, yeah, I know many people from, from that place. And uh, uh, I think that there's not uh, like dedicated Monero meetup. And the closest Monero meetup is in Vienna, usually. Okay. Uh, with the uh, guys from Riyadh. Mm -hmm. Yes. They are taking care about this part of Europe. Yes. Yeah, we know that we know them. I've met them. Hmm. All right. Well, this is great. So where could pe if people want to get more involved and perhaps maybe help you with the project? It sounds like maybe you would even need some help just uh, somebody that wants to help promote things and you know, kind of do that, those aspects, right? It, it looks like you yeah, might be looking for help in that, in that area, maybe. I would be happy, happy if any kind of uh, involvement will be placed uh, somewhere close to the RMX wallet. I would like to, this project to stay totally open and uh, I don't plan to make a company out of that. Uh, and uh, I would be like very happy if maybe somebody who is a hardware developer can say, okay, uh, I can help with this or that. Maybe to encourage uh, us or me to go for a crowdfunding to be able to spread some prototypes. I was also thinking about maybe uh, that could be, I could open a crowdfunding uh, for maybe 20 or 40 devices and I could spread them between the developers so they could help to, uh, to, to code something or mm. to prove the code is uh, sound or whatever. Any kind of uh, of comment, I will, I will be happy if there will be any kind of comment, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, 20, like people would have their own little uh, test kits to, to, be, yeah. to test the product? Yeah, so something like that. Because uh, I really don't, I, I don't plan to make uh, a company out of that, at least not at this moment, and I, I believe not in the short future. But I think uh, there is still, a, there is still, must be a model or or a way how to make it alive more than it is right now. Because a lot of work is done, and uh, it, it it is working actually somehow and working quite well, I believe. So. So now just, uh, just uh, we need a bit of magic to make it happen somehow. Mm -hmm. So where, where could people get in touch with you? What's the best way for people to either learn more about the project or reach out to you? I would say the e email is the best. <laughs> we have a website and uh, I just saw that there is a certificate expired certificate. I'm sorry for that and we will try to make it. Yeah, right. I noticed that before, right before uh, we started, yeah. It's rmxwallet.io, and uh, we have also a uh, uh, GitLab repository that you can find all the code. And also, there is Wikipedia pages about the hardware itself, how to how it works, uh, uh, a few words about the chip itself and the project itself. So people can just go there and check it. And if they want to contribute, they could contact me, and we can find out the way how to do it. All right. Yeah. Or, they, or yep. they can just fork it, and you know, and make it uh, working. I don't know. Yeah. Send send us all those links, and we'll put them in the show notes. And then uh, you know the email that you'd want people to to have to reach okay. out. To you, provide that as well. We'll put that in the show notes. I think I think you would see you'll see some people reaching out to you. I would expect. I know this is something a lot of people in the community have been waiting for. So I know it's very early stages, but. Uh, yeah. So, Monero community, please reach out to Pavel yeah. and okay, okay. We push, can them, do push them along, push them along. Yeah, okay, we can do that, it would be great. You know, I'm also like struggling a little bit uh, what to do with the project itself. Because uh, uh, until it was just a question of make it working, it was fun. But now it's doing something and now what, you know? Mm. And, like I don't want to throw it away and I would like to have fun again and more. So if it goes this way, I, I would be happy. 
Well, maybe that that's your personality as well. Maybe you're, you're you're interested more in the in the early stage of proving concepts. You know, is that yeah, is that something? Play, you play, play. And also, it's not so easy to uh, to bring a project on the market. Mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, if you have a uh, money and dedicated uh, approach or whatever, yes, there are certain people who can work in this mood and who can make it. But I'm not that kind of person. I don't want to actually. I don't want to do that. I'm happy. I'm happy with just uh, with developing and learning stuff. Mm -hmm. Understood. Well, hopefully, others that are more interested in those other aspects will reach out because I think there are a lot of people in the community too that don't don't really have those tech skills, those hardcore tech skills that you have, but maybe they have these other skills where they'd be willing yeah. to. Yeah, okay, no. come and reach me and we can make a team. <laughs> <laughs> we can make an online team and it, it could work. There you go. All right, Pavel, thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, uh, I'm also, thank you for making this happen. Of course. Uh, I wish you wish you luck. And hopefully maybe we could do an update show at some point, you know, whatever it is, six months from now, you know. We'll, yes, yes, yes. We'll sounds sounds good. All right. Have a yeah. good one. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right. Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.